coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX enters the competition to launch military satellites. NASA plans for the launch of their low-density supersonic decelerator. Mars rover gets a tune-up. I'm Bree Cross, it is May 29th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. As Congress and the Pentagon continue to squabble about the use of Russian technology rocket engines for the purpose of sending U.S. military satellites into orbit, another player has now entered the military satellite launching arena. The Air Force Space and Missile Systems Center has announced the certification of the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch system for national security space missions. This milestone is the culmination of a two-year effort on the part of the Air Force and SpaceX to execute the certification process and reintroduce competition into the evolved expendable launch vehicle program. The first upcoming opportunity for SpaceX to compete to provide launch services is projected to be in June when the Air Force releases a request for proposal for GPS-3 launch services. Elon Musk, SpaceX CEO and lead designer, stated that, quote, this is an important step forward bringing competition to national security space launch. We thank the Air Force for its confidence in us and look forward to serving it well." End quote. As NASA continues experimenting and testing for the flight to Mars, they are looking at the technology required to travel at supersonic speeds in the Martian atmosphere. The second flight test of NASA's low-density supersonic decelerator, called the LDSD, now will launch no earlier than June 2nd from the U.S. Navy's Pacific Missile Range Facility on Kauai, Hawaii. NASA's LDSD project is designed to investigate and test breakthrough technologies for landing future robotic and human Mars missions and safely returning large payloads to Earth. The test, performed over the Pacific Ocean, will simulate the supersonic entry and descent speeds at which the spacecraft would be traveling through the Martian atmosphere. After the break, the Mars rover can now see better. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADSB, ATX100, and ATX100G transceivers are the next gen ADSB solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. NASA's Mars rover named Curiosity had to pull over to the side of the road for a tune-up. Now tests on Mars have confirmed the success of a repair to the autonomous focusing capability of its chemistry and camera instrument. This instrument provides information about the chemical composition of targets by zapping them with laser pulses and taking spectrometer readings of the induced sparks. It also takes detailed images through a telescope. Work by the instrument's team members at Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico and in France has yielded an alternative autofocus method. The problem was a loss of a small laser that served for focusing the instrument during Curiosity's first two years on Mars. The repair allows quicker and more accurate imaging. Repairing a complex machine on Mars from laboratories on Earth is really amazing science. It is Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. In light of some recent conversations, Let's again define what ANN is and why we do this. Here is this week's Barnstorming. Thanks, Bree. Hi, folks. I had an interesting conversation the other day. A fellow who's uh, looking at possibly working with us, uh, somebody who's been watching us for quite a while, and I was 
kind of amazed and frankly impressed, uh, especially in light of some other conversations that have occurred, that as many people of you get the fact that to us this is more than a business. So I just felt that for the moment I wanted just to make a very blanket statement about this, especially as we're in the process of enhancing, improving, growing Aero News, Aero TV, Airborne, and a number of other projects you'll be hearing about over the next year or so. Yeah, we're a business. Yeah, we like to make a profit. But the main reason we do this is not to make a buck, but frankly because we believe passionately in aviation as it is and the future it might have. I grew up literally as a kid on an airport fence, a guy who pedaled his bicycle the better part of 20 miles from Oakland, New Jersey to Lincoln Park Airport to enjoy watching airplanes take off and land until I'd saved up enough money to, well, buy an hour of duel. And in a Cessna 150, hour upon hour upon hour, I fought my way into the aviation world. That was 18,000 flight hours ago. Not as many lately as I'd like, but it's been a good career and I love it desperately. But it's been the fact that I've flown everything from ultralights to jets to playing with rocket planes to flying formation with spaceships to spending hours upon hours in zero gravity that has given me this intense, and I do mean intense, passion for not only the world of aviation but expanding upon it. Aero News is simply this. We want to be a part of a revolution that we are instigating, fomenting, spreading, planning, talking about, and trying to instigate every way we possibly can to improve the lot of aviation, to build a future in which aviation is far more pervasive, far more profitable, far more accessible, and most important, far more valuable to the world around us. Yeah, we're a business, but the real business here is building aviation it's taking what we so passionately love and being able to grow it in a way that we're going to be able to give it to others. There are other kids outside the airport fence. Unfortunately, in these days, the airport fence has a lot of barbed wire around it, and that basically makes our job harder than ever. But we never, ever walked away from a fight, as you well know, and we're not walking away from this one. Aero News stands for aviation and its future. We're going to do the best we can to build a positive one, and most important of all, we hope you'll join with us. We want to do it collectively, cohesively, comprehensively, collectively, if you will, but most importantly, competently. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, and I really believe in this business. After these messages, the NTSB says pilots need to be looking for other aircraft. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Path. The NTSB has issued a safety alert urging pilots to vigilantly look out for other aircraft and to make their own presence known. They say pilots can be distracted by cell phones, tablets, and other devices that challenge the see and avoid concept. Eastern Airlines Group and Havana Air Charters have signed an agreement to support Havana's air charter operations to Cuba. Havana Air is the largest provider of passenger traffic to the island, currently operating 65 flights a month to Havana from Miami. River rafters searching a long-abandoned mining site in the Grand Canyon for old mining equipment came across an airplane wreckage. 
The airplane is similar in size and color to an RV-6 that went missing in the Grand Canyon National Park in 2011. NASA and the National Research Council of Canada have renewed a partnership agreement to continue critical research in the area of aircraft engine icing. This combined effort will help solve challenging weather-related issues facing the aviation community. And last but certainly not least, ANN will be at EAA AirVenture in full force this year, and we're looking for volunteers, we call them stringers, to help us produce the best coverage of this great event. We need people that want to be a part of the action. Is that you? Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Base jumping activists seek the unique thrill of skydiving from a fixed object, but as the law now reads, they are not allowed to base jump in national parks. A petition website has been launched to rectify what they claim is the unfair application of an existing law. The website says the policy of the National Park Service has been to fit base jumpers into a non-human category originally meant for cargo by applying the aerial delivery law to ban human flight in the parks. The petition requests that base jumping be allowed in national parks. According to the website, the existing prohibition does not stop base jumpers, but instead forces them to jump in non-optimal conditions to avoid detection by park rangers. They say the threat of arrest adds an unnecessary distraction in a situation that demands full concentration and many jumpers opt to not use their best equipment knowing that if they are caught, their gear will be confiscated. It's claimed that allowing base jumping to take place legally will improve safety. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful weekend.